Hello, I'm very happy to meet you here in the, in the hotel in Stuttgart, Sandro van Veronesi. And you have just published a book in, by Klet Cotta. You was born in Firenze. Yeah. You are architect. You have written a thesis about Victor Hugo. You are one of the best known writers in Italy of your generation. You started writing in 1998, Per dove parte questo treno allegro? 88. 89. 1988, 1988, yes. Per dove parte questo treno allegro? Then several fa fictions followed and you have received important prizes as Premio Campiello and the Premio Via Reggio for your novel La Forza del Passato. Uh, the novel Chaos Calmo was honored with the Premio Strega and the Prix Femina Etranger. XY, published in 2010, was translated by Michael von Killeshorn and published also by Klet Cotta. A very exciting story. An empty ledge returns to a village and there are 11 corpses. Mm. Klet Cotta just published um, Lies for Sfiorati, Die Berührten. Before I ask you some details about your protagonist, I would like to know whether you make any allusion to the cinema in your story. Your brother Giovanni Veronesi is a famous director, for example, he produced the films Genitori e Fili, Agitare Bene um, Prima Deluso, o Manuel, Manuale d'Amore Tre. While reading Li Sciorati, I had sometimes the impression to read a screenplay. Is this right? Uh, uh, it's strange because I, I don't write screenplays because I'm not good for screenplays. No, no. I discovered it. I tried to to make a living by writing screenplays, as many authors I know. But it's not my job. I'm not good. But, but I think the, your novel has some allusions. To it. It's not my will. Yeah. Uh, but it's possible because mm -hmm. you know uh, when you use a very visual writing, uh, a, a, a language that contains a lot of, of images. Of course, yes. cinema is made by visions and images, but I don't, I don't think of cinema just because, as I told you, uh, well, it's my brother's matter, mm -hmm. it's my brother's field, <laughs> and uh, I am not comfortable with writing uh, screenplays. I'm too long. I, I'm always too long. I'm not. I cannot. Uh, use the language with the time mm -hmm. of screen of movie screenplays. Mm -hmm. So, I think that uh, where you can find allusions to the cinema, uh, if you want to transform those pages in a movie, you should make a lot of work, and uh, it's just that kind of work that I I'm not good to do. Mm -hmm. Your story takes place in Rome and covers two weeks. On closer inspection, the relation between the protagonists, especially Met, and the city of Rome seems to be important for your plot. You are also an architect. Rome, like every town, leaves his mark on its inhabitants. But why did you choose Rome? Well, uh, as many authors or film directors who came to Rome from the province, Fellini or Sorrentino, Uh, Raffaele La Capria a lot. Uh, I was shocked by Rome mm -hmm. because Rome uh, it's uh, definitely a, a crazy uh, unique town in the world because uh, uh, it's the amount of four functions that never never else uh, you, you, you can find in the world. It's a capital, it's a metropole, it's a holy town and it's an arts Mm -hmm. city. So you can't find another in the world because Jerusalem, for example, it's not a metropole. Mm -hmm. Paris, for example, is not a holy town. Mm -hmm. So the four functions make Rome unique and really shocking for somebody who comes in to live there, not as a tourist, And so you get up each morning and go out to have breakfast and work or whatever. Uh, it's really, really something you have to tell because it's an experience. It's a shocking experience. Uh, in my case, uh, it was uh, the restitution of the, of the 
crazy experience of, of, of being part of it. Uh, the real glimpse uh, which creates the energy for the novel. Mm -hmm. But we must say also that uh, this novel has been written when I was young, 25 years ago, and uh, it can be read now as a testify, a testimony uh, about Rome yes. before the digital era. Yes. I, I didn't remark it that, uh, that the book was written 20, 25 years ago. Only one detail revealed me that it was written 25 years ago. That was the automatic film transport of the, of the reflex camera. Yeah, uh, there, there is a, a lot of, of uh, uh, aspects that uh, in the book that denounce the fact that it was written in another era because mm -hmm. all those guys, the, the young characters, they don't own any cellular phone, there is no internet, there is no social media and since the main character Mete, he is a young graphologist, uh, he still uh, works as a graphology manually mm -hmm. uh, with uh, instruments uh, and with its hands. Now, uh, graphology is half digital, so you don't now you don't need any instrument to uh, to measure the letters because you have a software, yeah. so you can scan and then measure. And this is is, is, is sort of a historical novel. Yeah. Um, we'll have a look to the Corso Vittorio. You, re you write, I quote, sometimes a stage for bank robbery, another time a sunny promenade. In other words, these different scenes of the town influence the characters of your story and not only the characters of your book. You are sensitive for the relation between the town and its inhabitants. Yes, of course. You, you said that I am an architect. And I definitely studied as an, arch as an architect, uh, architecture stu student. Uh, for five years, the relationship between men and women and space. This is architecture. So um, it's the only structural study I made, and uh, uh, it reflects always in in, uh, in my novels. In that case, I was fresh of my studies because I was young. Uh, I was graduated since four years, and the imprinting of the architectural reading was very strong and the energy uh, I, would, I was talking about uh, came from uh, this architectural reading mm -hmm. of the space and the characters just like in a composition. Uh, it still works with, in, in my books but at that time it was really the most important uh, feeling I had with my own characters too. Yes. The story reveals, reveals Miet as a typical character of the generation of the 80s. Yeah, uh, not, not so typical because he is a very strange guy. He has a very strange education, half religious. He is not uh, an example of young people of the 80s in Italy because a 80s in Italy are, uh, are considered the decade of uh, of uh, amusement and uh, enjoyment uh, since Mete is a very severe guy uh, but he reflects uh, with this uh, in the story with his uh, with his love for Belinda or uh, in relationship with other young people uh, what was uh, young people in the 80s in Italy mm -hmm. and in Rome. Uh, he is not, but he's attracted and he tells what are young people in that very period uh, in Italy. Mm -hmm. The narration follows the speed of the action. The wedding ceremony takes about 20 lines, and but the description of Matt's practice as scaffolog needs much more. He uses even the knowledge, his, this knowledge of scaffolog to choose a woman. Um, he has no scruples? He should, but you know, uh, for the uh, severe religious education he received, graphology itself, it is sort, it's a sort of gnosis. It's forbidden. It's forbidden the 
acknowledgement of uh, so uh, hidden aspects of other human beings life it's uh, without any relationship because he is able to understand a lot of things of uh, me and you uh, even in our absence just reading uh, the characters in our in our in our in our writing so of course uh, he doesn't have scruples because he al he already is on the wild side mm -hmm. as a as a young religiously educated boy when we consider the whole story it seems that meat loses the control about his activities the reader could find a turning point in the story or is he drawn in the action from the beginning no he you told it's uh, two it, it covers two weeks yeah. the first week he is escaping mm -hmm. with all his strength uh, the fatal moment mm -hmm. and he doesn't face uh, the, 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 the he doesn't face actually he doesn't face his sister mm -hmm. Belinda who attracted him so strongly in the second half he doesn't go out from the house where he lived with Belinda mm -hmm. so at in the second part he surrenders he surrenders and he, from the point of view of who uh, is telling the story, he is descri de describing and depicting uh, his generation, he becomes one of those, mm -hmm. probably the most guilty, because he has the acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. The other people, Belinda, they don't have, they just, they're just that way as a natural or cultural uh, sign, but he chooses mm -hmm. to join them in this loss of, of, of consciousness that's, that in this case it becomes worse, even worse than consciousness. Mm -hmm. Matt has neither initiative for his or for the actions. He is driven by the circumstances or even by a certain fear to be alone. He thinks always about women. Yes, of course there is a repression in him because he has been repressed by this severe education and uh, by a mother uh, who died mm -hmm. recently uh, who owned him as a gift but uh, kept him away far from the madding crowd so for him uh, coming from province to Rome because he comes from Recanati that is a small town far from home uh, there is this instinct of uh, getting lost, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just like all those guys who mm -hmm. don't don't stand the energy of Rome. Mm -hmm. He is uh, one of those. I've written on the blog. The lecture draws the reader into the story. One explication could be: um, I think the description, the action in the novel, in your novel, are not very strictly separated from each other, and. You addresses directly the reader. We will have a look to meet, or you stops the description when meet suddenly returns. Yes, it's a it's a f sort of of. Uh, I was young, and I was to up to look for uh, the position uh, in uh, in relationship with the reader. So I thought after a quite traditional novel that was my first uh, I thought that I could dare some more direct mm -hmm. uh, it's 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 dangerous mm -hmm. because it's something that can be uh, not comfortable but if you are able to balance uh, uh, the reader is brought close to Mete because the voice uh, telling yes. the story the voice is always close to Mete Mm -hmm. uh, so, even the reader with Mete there in the trouble mm -hmm. uh, is brought, this is the intention, mm -hmm. uh, even with, with a 
a, a short dialogue with the reader itself. Uh, it, it's it's a it's tradition. I don't invent anything. Yeah. It's quite dangerous, but uh, I felt comfortable uh, in writing that style, and I used it again in other novels after that. Fine. The new family of Matt is a patchwork family. His mother died recently, and his father has already a nearly 17 years old daughter with his mistress Virna who pretends to like Matt very much, but he feels the marriage of his father with his mother is annulated by the relationship of, with Werner. Is that right? Yes, uh, because as I told you, um, his mother's side of the family was very severe, religious, and uh, on the contrary, his father is a very light man. He's a very superficial man. So he leaves the contradiction between the two worlds that separated uh, since uh, a lot of years, but he is still there, and he is obliged to be to live together with the two worlds, and uh, this is one of the first uh, and probably the most uh, uh, painful for him uh, contradictions. He is forced to leave. It is also the first, there are a lot of others mm -hmm. that are consequences, I think, of this first. Mm -hmm. His father wishes that his half-sister Belinda stays two weeks in the apartment of Matt during the honeymoon. We do, not, we do not learn very much about Belinda. She is in drugs, but not really addicted to drugs. She goes still, still to school. She reads the Inferno of Dante. Matt suffers when she appears in the white night dress? Yeah, uh, that's a problem. He has already this mm, insane passion for her and he avoided her as he could. Uh, once in Rome he avoided her again but in that very case it, it's the father who gives her in his hands just because he she, The father says, she's strange, Mete, you are your, her brother, you have to patrol, you have to, to do for her best, without knowing that it was the opposite. He wanted to, to possess her, mm -hmm. he was in, 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 a, in trouble with, with the idea of, of his sister, so uh, it's difficult to say uh, if the father could understand, could imagine this. I think a father can't imagine something like that. There's a cat that Belinda has to bring to her doctor. In fact, she doesn't manage this, and the cat gets a certain signification for the whole plot. Yes. Um, it's, uh, this book is full of symbols, really full. Just thanks of Rome which gives symbols, dozens, uh, it, it, it's sufficient to walk in the center to meet symbols. This cat uh, is named Belzebuth, mm -hmm. and uh, since Belinda is given at the responsibility of Mete, but the cat is given at the responsibility of Belinda, yes. Of course, something will not work in this yes. in this uh, circle, and the cat w will be responsible. Uh, the care of the cat will be responsible of a very serious mm -hmm. uh, that I don't I don't say now, but uh, very serious cons consequence. But of course, uh, uh, logic says that the responsibility of cat of the cat was. Uh, for Mete too, because he had the responsibility of Belinda, who had the responsibility mm -hmm. of the cat. So everything at the end is responsibility of yeah. Mete. I have two more questions. Who should read your book? Well, probably those who who read X Y, because uh, we don't we didn't say that uh, Mete is the same character. Uh, yeah, he's yeah. young here in XY. He's a 45 years old priest, mm -hmm. uh, and in this 
novel, there is a secret that in XY is not said about him. So, first, the readers of XY, they should read uh, these. And then, I think... All these readers have to become the readers of XY. Uh, okay, it's it's a, it's a, it's two ways, but uh, another reason for read for reading this book now it's just the the quarter of century that is uh, passed from the time I wrote it to now because you can understand retrospectively uh, a lot of things that when they happened uh, they were surprising surprising. But uh, we are settled in this, in this novel just on the eve mm -hmm. of a huge revolution, the digital revolution. When I wrote this book, I didn't know that we were on the eve of a revolution. But now I know. So there is a, a good reason to read now this book uh, because there is the, 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 the testimony of what was changing before the big changement. A last question, Chris. A last question. Today starts the first football match in Brazil. Who will win the competition? Brazil, because if it yeah. doesn't, it will be very hard for for the players <laughs> uh, and for, for for the whole people. They you, already you, lost you, one. You are convinced that will be Brazil? Yes, I think that at all costs, Brazil must win. Thank you very much. E credo che almeno una risposta un po' arida, ma secondo me giusta sta nel fatto che Roma è l'unica città al mondo, non esiste un'altra, che ricopra contemporaneamente il ruolo di metropoli, capitale, città sacra e città d'arte. Cioè Gerusalemme non è una metropoli, Parigi non è una città sacra, non esiste città che abbiano quattro funzioni insieme, come a dire non si può, nessuno lo fa, Roma lo fa e questa è la cosa secondo me urbanisticamente parlando, la ragione che poi genera questa, questa follia che, che a sua volta ha generato i film di Fellini o quelli di Sorrentino e anche molto più piccolo questo mio libro, è qualcosa no. che non dovrebbe essere. Suo padre gli si materializzò davanti, di nuovo scattante e leonardesco, la pelle dura, imperlata dell'acqua della doccia. Mete, ancora sprofondato nella sua reminiscenza, se ne spaventò e fu un brutto risveglio il suo, in una desertica regione di legno dove l'aria era torrida, irrespirabile e il nemico risorgeva pieno di forze. Mete, disse il padre, non è meglio se esci. No, sto bene, rispose Mete, sto bene qui, ma non stava bene. D'improvviso le parti si erano rovesciate, come accade nelle saune finlandesi, dove cinque minuti equivalgono a un'era e un getto d'acqua fredda all'invenzione della polvere da sparo. In una generazione di fratelli minori per lui, di giovanissimi, nei, nei quali Mete nota qualcosa di di nuovo, di diverso. Io così l'ho scritto, ma adesso, riguardando cosa è successo pochi anni dopo, la rivoluzione che c'è stata, nei rapporti, soprattutto tra i giovani, Belinda è come se fosse un, una marziana che veniva da 15 anni dopo sparata indietro e che a modo suo, in modo che Mete trova molto seduttivo, ma insomma inventatemi internet, 
inventatemi i telefonini, i social network, come faccio io a fare cinque cose contemporaneamente se non me le date? Perché sono fatto per fare cinque cose contemporaneamente. Quanto, quanto ci vuole? Chi volava mete aveva attaccato le parti vitali. Continuando a sottovalutarne la gravità, ormai Mete trascurava ogni veduta d'insieme. Non gli sembrava grave d'aver praticamente smesso di studiare, d'aver cominciato a drogarsi, né di essersi fatto travolgere da un amore, come altro definirlo, scellerato, e neppure da quella mattina d'aver perduto per propria colpa uno dei due soli amici che aveva. Semplicemente si può dire che non ne avesse vera coscienza, come se ancora sopravvivesse in lui l'assurda convinzione che la sua vita fosse altro, mentre invece ormai non era che questo.